All right, we are in the month of July and you notice something pretty abnormal. So let's say that you live in a Caribbean island and it is a beautiful morning. So you go outside uh, hoping to get some wonderful fresh morning air. However, in the distance, you notice that the mountains are pretty hazy. Next, you look up and you realize that the usually blue bright sky is now having a brownish hue to it. What on earth is going on? That is likely the Saharan dust and so in this video I'll be sharing some general information about the Saharan dust just to help you guys get a bit more familiar with it if you're not and also go into some benefits as well as some of the disadvantages of Saharan dust being prevalent across the Atlantic Basin and so uh, before I go into details though please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, now where is the Saharan dust from? Now, based on the name, you might guess that it comes from the Sahara Desert in Africa. And if you guessed so, you are spot on. So it is from the Sahara Desert, which is located in Northern Africa. Now, what happens is that sometimes there are these dust storms, all that dust getting kicked up by strong winds. And sometimes all of this dust leaves the desert in plumes and travel across the Atlantic. But what carries them well there are prevalent winds known as the easterlies they blow from east to west or simply the trade winds we're more familiar with that term here in the Caribbean so the trade winds carry that Sahara dust uh, across the Atlantic to the Caribbean and even to the United States as well so that is how it reaches the Caribbean now it is made up of lots of particulate matter and it generally induces a very dry environment of stable weather and so uh, uh, now with that being said I'm going into some benefits of the Saharan dust and so because it induces that dry stable weather what we oftentimes see is that July or even June to July even going into the early part of August there isn't much tropical cyclone activity because what happens is that uh, tropical cyclones all that thunderstorm activity that convection it depends on instability but as I said the Saharan dust or the Saharan air layer induces lots of stability so conditions are very stable there are no thunderstorms so uh, we don't really see much development of tropical cyclones in the month of July and by the way that is where we have most development during the hurricane season coming from those tropical waves that make their way off the coast of Africa and propagate westward to the Caribbean and then over into the eastern Pacific some of which actually develop into tropical cyclones each hurricane season and so uh, that is one benefit and and it also helps to reduce uh, sea surface temperatures when you have a large plume of dust being very persistent across the Atlantic the tropical Atlantic for a long time what happens is that it acts as a shield that layer of dust acts as a shield to reflect sunlight and oftentimes uh, when we see that happening and we look at an anomaly map uh, we would notice that there are decreased sea surface temperatures within that particular area of abundant dust and dry air so uh, that is one of the other benefits that also reduces tropical cyclone activity but uh, and another that is more on the aesthetic side of life is that it helps to induce a lot more beautiful sunrises and sunsets and so now we want to go on to some of the disadvantages of the dust now there are some times when certain areas in the Caribbean are not experiencing a lot of rainfall and uh, sometimes these tropical waves are coming in but they have very reduced activity activity or even no activity in association with them you couldn't even tell that a tropical wave is there because of the dust infiltrating and again inducing that stable weather so because of that uh, if that remains a consistent pattern for some time it actually can result in droughts across some areas allowing them to be deprived of any substantial precipitation so that is one disadvantage for example down in the ABC islands there is not much activity uh, that has been prevalent there and hence they have been experiencing some drier conditions and hardly any substantial rainfall or consistent rainfall and that was the case earlier 
earlier in June for the Northeastern Caribbean. Even longer than that, for several weeks, well, there wasn't any uh, significant rainfall activity, thus resulting in drought. So that is one disadvantage of it. Because of these stabilized weather, there isn't much rainfall for some areas. Another disadvantage of the Saharan dust is that it has health effects. It can bring on flu-like symptoms. So you might think that you're coming down with the cold or the flu, but in reality, it is just the dust. It causes skin and eye irritation, sneezing, coughing, even resulting in asthma attacks in persons such as myself. I'm asthmatic. So that is another disadvantage of the Saharan dust. And I also want to go back to the advantages. One just came in my mind. The fact that it helps to enrich the soil uh, with elements such as phosphorus and iron. So those actually help to uh, enrich the soil. And we know that with enriched soil, we have vast or better crop production. I mean, we all love food. We love when food is top tier so that is one benefit as well of the Saharan dust and so in all it is very beneficial and like everything in life there are pros and there are cons so that is just another uh, this is just another scenario of actually seeing that in terms of the Saharan dust and so guys that is what I wanted to share with you in this video and so I hope that you found it to be very informative and if you have any questions do leave them in the comments I will respond once I get the chance and as always remember to be weather wise.